Self-control is a capacity that develops from very early in life all the way really through at least early adulthood. In other words, we get more self-controlled as we get older, in part because the prefrontal cortex is maturing well into our 20s, in part because we're learning strategies, we're learning how to plan ahead, how to make a plan that stretches out into the future as opposed to just what we're gonna do in the next hour. So as we grow up, as we move through early childhood, through you know uh, middle childhood and then adolescence and even early adulthood, we're getting better and better at kind of dealing with the conflicts and self-control, the conflict between something that feels good right now and something that's good for us later. Now, parents of teenagers often wring their hands, and as a parent of two teenagers, I often wring my hands because it can be frustrating when your kids don't, you know, don't do what's in their best interest, even when you know at some level they, they understand what, you know, <laughs> what the consequences of being on Snapchat until two in the morning are, and then they do it again. Uh, but I think one important feature in particular is to think about adolescence as not only you know, a period in which self-control is gradually developing, but also the strength of impulses during the teenage years is especially strong. So you're gradually developing your self-control capability, but your impulse to do things that are novel, that are maybe a little thrill-seeking, a little risky, and, you know, certainly fun and social in the moment are are perhaps at a lifetime peak. Your self-control capability isn't fully mature yet, and yet you have these very strong impulses. And I do think teenagers need um, uh, some support then, and I think it's for this reason also that, for example, programs like graduated driving programs that don't just like give you your license right away, but recognize, you know, you're an adolescent, this might not be the time to give you, you know, complete control of a car. I think these are other ways that we can accommodate the, you know, basically the biological development of, of teenage brains and, and their emerging strategies in concert with their very strong impulses. One thing that teenagers might want to keep in mind when they go out on a Friday night or a Saturday night or um, otherwise are in a social situation is that the presence of your friends, the presence of your same age peers will have an influence on your behavior. So teenagers tend to do much riskier, more impulsive uh, things like, uh, you know, speeding or maybe, you know, taking drugs, you know, things that they probably upon reflection would say, yeah, that's not a great idea um, when they're with friends than when they are alone or when they're just with an adult. So before you get into a car with a bunch of friends or go out to a party, just recognize that, of course, you're doing what teenagers do. You're hanging out with your friends, but, you know, you may not be at your most reflective, wisest self when only with those friends. So make an idea of your evening clear to you before you go out. Like, what is this evening going to be? Maybe before you leave the house, when you're not yet with your friends? Like, what do I intend to do? What time do I intend to come back tonight? You know, will I or will I not get into this person's car? Make those decisions when you're not just with, you know, other people who are your age. Parents who have teenagers at home, I think recognizing that the teenager that they have is going to be maybe a different teenager when the teenager they have is just with their teenage friends might just, you know, keep that caution in mind um, th that, that, you know, peer influence is extremely strong when you're in those years. So, you know, on the one hand, be more understanding, I think, but also maybe take take precautions, right? I mean, don't, don't, don't let teenagers spend, you know, days and nights by themselves. You know, one of the most important predictors of um, positive life outcomes is actually like positive structured time with adults. So, so even though teenagers um, might not, you know, tell you that they want to hang out with you, it is really important that we spend time with our teenagers, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, quiet conversation, you know, wherever you can get it, um, 15 minutes of dinner time conversation, you know, the kids that need us uh, need us all the time, even if they won't tell us they need us.